Hello and welcome to osmosis. So the effects of water potential on the movement of water into and out of cells. The first animal cells that were investigated were red blood cells. We have a biconcave red blood cell or erythrocyte. When it was placed in an isotonic solution there was no net movement of water. Basically water moved into the cell and out of the cell through the phospholipid bilayer and so there was no actual change in the size of the cell because the water, there was no water potential gradient basically. Okay, When they placed the same red blood cell in a hypotonic solution, so a solution that has lots of free water molecules because there's very little um, solutes, the water enters the cell and as you can see completely changes its shape, it actually bursts. Now because the first experiment that they did was on red blood cells, the hemolysis is where this comes from. So heme, talking about the hemoglobin that was inside this cell, and lysis meaning broken, this cell has basically broken and lost all its hemoglobin. So that's why we call it when an animal cell uh, bursts because water travels across the phospholipid bilayer by osmosis down a water potential gradient from the higher water potential outside the cell to the lower water potential inside the cell it's hemolysis. Okay, moving on then. Hypertonic solution, so in this solution we have very few if any free water molecules and they c the solution contains lots of dissolved solutes like salts or sugars because of that, the cell loses water by osmosis. So again, water moves by osmosis via the phospholipid bilayer, or it can even travel via um, channel proteins called aquaporins. The water leaves from a higher water potential in the cell to a lower water potential outside the cell, down a water potential gradient, and we can see that this cell has little craters on its surface, so it crenates. So animal cells crenate when they lose water, hemolyze when they gain too much water, and stay the same in isotonic solutions. In contrast, then there's three. Well, there's more names for you to learn when we're talking about animals, uh, plant cells. So in plant cell, this is a plant cell in isotonic solution. This is the vacuole. We have the plant cell wall, so the cellulose cell wall, which remember is freely permeable, so water and solutes can move in and out of this cellulose cell wall. And it's only the plasma membrane in the plant cell that's able to determine whether something enters or leaves the cell or not. So we call it partially permeable. So then, in a hypotonic, so lots of free water, you're going to get lots of water entering the cell and so filling up this vacuole, so you can see the vacuole is larger. This causes the cell to become turgid and this is basically the plant cell wall is very, very strong and so even though the vacuole is full, at some point no more water can get into that cell because the pressure that's causing water to want to enter the cell is being counteracted by the pressure of this cell wall pushing back on the water. So as water tries to go in, into the cell here, this vacuole is filling up, pushing the cytoplasm against the cell wall. That cell wall is resisting that and so therefore stopping that water molecule from getting in any further. So we say that the cells are turgid and that's what stops plant cells from um, breaking up and hemolyzing. So the last one then is hypertonic so no free water molecules so this means that the water leaves so you can see here we've got a very small vacuole water has left the cell the plant cell wall you'll see is still in the same position that it's been in all the other cells but what's happened is now we've got gaps here and here this is where the actual plasma membrane has lysed or broken away from the cellulose cell wall. So we call this plasma, referring to the plasma membrane, lysis, plasmolysis. And this means that 
because the cell wall is freely permeable you can sometimes get in these spaces any salts or sugars that are actually in this solution because they can freely diffuse down their concentration gradient into this space remember the membrane is the plasma membrane is partially permeable and so if the plasma membrane does not have any carrier or channel proteins to allow these substances into the cell then they won't actually go into the cell but they can go through the plant cell wall. Hope that helps. Good luck.